I'm Robert. I'm from Warm Up. Since Warm Up can be used as an underfloor heater as primary heat, we do have a lot of people that have cold basements and want to heat their basement effectively from the floor with Warm Up. And they're generally large rooms and often exceed the amount of amperage a single thermostat can use. So you do have the option of putting in multiple thermostats and having multiple zones. Or you can use this cool little device, which is the uh, Relay 25. Uh, the Relay 25 works in conjunction with the 4IE thermostat. Uh, it allows you to do uh, up to 25 amps. Which, uh, typically, that's two large heaters or three smaller ones, as well as using 15 amps that the thermostat can hold. So you can do a 40 amp area with the Relay 25 and the 4IE. Get that large area in one zone with one thermostat. Or if it's a very large basement, you can use multiple Relay 25s and still have one programmable thermostat with a 4IE. So let's get going. I'm going to show you how to wire the Relay 25. Okay, we're going to wire up our Relay 25 with our warm-up 4IE thermostat. This is the Wi-Fi version. It will work with any of the thermostats, but I personally prefer the Wi-Fi version of the thermostat. It's easier to control, does some really cool features. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up our uh, load side, which in the wiring diagram, uh, you will find the wiring diagram if you don't have a copy. It's on our website, warmup.com. Uh, just go to the warm up PDF section and you'll find all our technical information, including the wiring diagram for the Relay 25. So on the wiring diagram, this is listed as number four and number eight. So we're going to wire those up. Now, of course, the first thing you want to do is you want to test the ohms of your heater. As always, uh, we're gonna set the dial to 200 on our multimeter, 200 ohms, and we're going to test the heater itself to make sure we have the proper resistance for this size heater. That can be done by putting these, uh, your lead wires from the heater. It'll give you an ohm reading, and in this case, you want the ohm reading to match the tag that is on the heater. It's also written on the box, the instruction manual, and again, can be found on warmuppedia.com. This heater is the correct ohms for what it should be. So we're gonna do the second heater as well to make sure that we get the proper ohms. Our ohm reading for that is also is going to be correct for what it should be. Once we do that, we're then going to wire up the Relay 25. The input, uh, you're gonna put your first line wire from your first heater, as well as the first line wire from your second heater into number four in your wiring diagram which is the second in a row on the bottom. So we're gonna tighten those all up together. Pretty straightforward and simple to do there. Then we're gonna take the second load side of our heater, and that's going to wire in with the second load side of the second heater. And we're gonna put those in number eight according to your wiring diagram, which is the fourth in a row on your relay. So we're gonna tighten those up nice and tight. So those are our two loads for the heaters into our relay 25 in this one here as well as this one here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our power from the circuit breaker to our Relay 25. We're going to take our line one, which is gonna go into number two on your wiring diagram in the relay, which is the first screw in this row. We're gonna tighten that one up there. And we're going to do our second circuit align into number six on your wiring diagram, which is the third screw there. As far as the breaker to use, uh, of course, we're gonna be drawing close to 25 amps uh, from the heaters. So you do wanna check with what your local code requirement is for the proper size circuit, as well as the correct gauge wiring. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect that to our thermostat. In this situation, this is if we're using two heaters. What we can do is we can wire the thermostat on its own circuit breaker, or if you like, what you can do is you can bring in from the line side on the thermostat, and we can take a little bit of power from the circuit breaker that's powering the relay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together and since this is our power here from the circuit breaker, I'm going to put this in, take a little bit of power here, and then I'm going to take our second line in for the thermostat. And again, we're gonna take some power from the circuit breaker that's powering the relay here. And we're gonna put a little bit of power here. And that's gonna give us our line in for our thermostat. Now keep in mind the thermostat does draw a little less than an amp, um, but it's gonna draw some power there. So when you're doing your circuit breaker, it's not gonna steal from the 25 
amps of the relay, but it will take it from your circuit breaker a little bit. So keep that in mind. So we have our thermostat powered up. We have our relay powered up from the circuit breaker and in input two and input six from the wiring diagram. And then we have our load coming out from the relay in number four and number eight from our wiring diagram. We need to now take our load side from the thermostat which when the sensor calls for heat from the floor by measuring the floor temperature, it's going to tell the thermostat by according to the program to power on. It's going to send out power from the thermostat from the load side. We're gonna run that into zero and one on our relay in the wiring diagram, and that is going to be a dry contact. We're going to essentially put these two here. And that's going to go here. And we're going to tighten those down. We have our dry contact, so when the thermostat calls for heat, it's going to open the contact, open the electricity coming through the relay. It's going to power from our two lines in to our two loads out, and the whole system will operate as one system. If you wish, if you want to separate these two and put the relay in a box that's a little bit more hidden, a little bit out of the way, you can wire up the thermostat's load side with some extension wires, again, using the proper gauge for a 240 volt, and we can wire those together. And we're gonna put those wires together with a good wire nut here. And that'll allow you to extend the wires for the load side of the thermostat. And that will allow you to put the relay in a different position, a little bit farther from the thermostat if you wish. So we can wire those together as so. Now, typically code does require you to uh, have access to the relay, but you can put it in a closet or somewhere else that's a little bit more obscure. Uh, just make sure that you have a proper access panel. And uh, again, you could extend the uh, line-in wires for the thermostat to give you the same effect, but that allows you to put the relay farther away so the thermostat can be on the wall in the room. The relay can be a little bit more hidden. Now, if we're gonna do a third heater in this, this scenario, this side is going to wire essentially the same. The difference is though, is we're not going to power our thermostat uh, with the same circuit as the relay. So I'm gonna take those out and we're gonna do that a little different. So these are going to come out. Now you're still gonna have your circuit that's gonna go in there to power the relay from the circuit breaker. That's going to power our two heaters. However, this time what we're going to do is the third heater is going to be powered directly on its own circuit. So we're going to need to wire the thermostat to its own circuit. So that's going to be your line side in from the circuit breaker. Again, the thermostat itself is gonna draw 15 amps max. So uh, you'll need to use the proper circuit according to code for that. And then we're gonna take and do our second line from our circuit breaker, from our second circuit breaker directly to the thermostat. On our load side of the thermostat, that's still gonna to go to the two dry contacts of the relay. But what we're going to do is we're gonna take our third heater and our third heater is also going to go to the load coming out of the thermostat. So we're gonna have the load for the heater, the load going to the dry contact of the relay on one. Then we're going to have our second load from the heater going to our second load from the third heater and going to our second dry contact. And we're gonna put those three wires together. And again, always remember to test your heater with the multimeter to make sure it matches up to the proper resistance. And then again, also make sure that you attach your sensor to the sensor input so that the thermostat can read floor temperature. So in this scenario, we have our third heater coming out of the load of the thermostat, as well as our power going to the dry contact of the relay. We have our second line coming from our third heater coming out of the load for the thermostat, also going to our dry contact on the relay Relay, which is zero and one on the wiring diagram. We're going to have our power coming from the first circuit breaker to two and six on our wiring diagram for the relay. We're going to have our two heaters going to number four and number eight according to the wiring diagram for the relay. So we have these two powered on our loads. We have this one powered on our load. We have the dry contact powered on our load from the thermostat. We have a circuit going into the relay and we have a circuit going into the thermostat. That allows us to do three heaters with 40 amps. And as always, don't forget to hook up your ground wires. So we're gonna take our ground wire from each of the three heaters and we're gonna wire that to the ground wire from the house and ground the whole system.